Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So we're in DCS World here and we've had a couple of mm, queries slash complaints that DCS World, that the, the line of sight model in DCS World isn't very good. And this has been building up for a year or so and I thought, right, we better go and test it. Now my personal view is, you know, I've been doing this for years now. I think it's I think it's good. I think it's perfectly satisfactory for a flight sim and I wouldn't really want it anymore because remember, as I always say, the more detail you're going to have in things like line of sight, you know, vector testing, then the more processing it's going to require, the, the more troublesome it's going to become when you run big multiplayer servers and stuff like that. So that's my feeling on it. However, I've never actually tested it. So what we're going to do is today is test it and see how good it really is. There are lots of different situations we can test. So we'll be using a helicopter today because when it comes to an airplane, there's not really much line of sight you can test because the plane is never going to be moving you know, much slower than kind of 200 knots. So in a helicopter, it's going to be much easier for us to test. We can hide behind trees, we can hide behind bushes, walls, uh, fences, clotheslines, blades of grass, whatever. And we're going to split it into four categories. We'll first be looking at terrain. How does the line of sight work in terrain? Next, we'll look at large static objects like infrastructure, big bridges, uh, whatever else I can find. Next, small static objects like houses, factories, chimneys, trees, uh, walls, stuff like that. So stuff that's small but doesn't move. And then we'll start looking at dynamic objects, which is probably where, the, where it'll change a bit. Dynamic objects are things that are movable, things like ships and tanks and, you know, whatever else that can move other aircraft, if you will. And what I think we'll find is that there is perfectly satisfactory line of sight model for everything, probably except dynamic vehicles. There probably isn't line of sight for dynamic vehicles is what, is what we'll find. And that's perfectly acceptable, I think, for a um, uh, for a flight sim. And we've got direct comparisons we can draw as well as uh, DCS. We also do Armour 3, which is, if you haven't seen it, it's like a, uh, an infantry simulator. I mean, that's literally what it is, an infantry simulator. And what we'll find is that the line of sight modeling in Armour 3 is far superior to the line of sight modeling in DCS. But that's just a function of what that is. That's because you're simulating infantry and you can kind of duck down behind letterboxes and lampposts and stuff like that. And, and it's designed, it's programmed to give you that kind of line of sight level of detail because that's what it is. Whereas in DCS, you, you know, you're not simply not programmed down to that kind of level. And we wouldn't really want it to do for the reasons that we explained earlier. So enough of me jibber-jabbering. Uh, let's get on with this. I'm going to be blue. I'm going to be a UH-1 over here. Okay. First of all, I'll show you what we've got today as our test. So as our control, we've got Batumi. In the middle of Batumi, we've got Ping. A beautiful British Challenger 2 tank. A, a Zeus 23 on a truck. Okay. That's not going to happen. What's happening? Do you know what that was? We'll just ignore No, they found me already. <laughs> oh dear, that's not a good start. That's shooting right through the bloody trees, isn't it? What's firing? It's the Shilka. No, I don't know what it is. Ah. It's everything. Everything's firing, I think. It's the Tunguska. Uh, and that's a little bit in... Oh. Note how the two radar guided, uh, both the Shilka and the Tunguska have radar guided AAA. That's interesting. Anyway, uh, I'm going to carry on because you know I don't want to, I don't want to make this look better than it is. So I'm going to carry on as it is. Challenger two tank. We've got a Zeus twenty three on a truck. We've got a radar guided Shilka. We've got a, a man pad there, IR guided. We've got a Strela uh, Mark two uh, uh, SA thirteen, IR guided. We've got a Tunguska. Then a Tunguska, for its guns, is radar guided. For its missiles, is Sackloss. Um, God, I don't think we've got the time to explain that today. But essentially, it can be radar slave. But essentially, at the end of the day, it is optically driven. Um, the missile is going to be optically driven. So it will need a line of sight to be able to fire at me. Tunguska, radar guided missiles. Uh, sorry, um, SA. 15 Tor, radar guided missiles, and a Sacklos rapier here. So again, we've got a guidance, guidance radar, which we can slave the optical 
that's incredibly frustrating that is um which have got an op optical uh, sack loss system uh, it does need again line of sight it's got a crosshair which has to be on the target uh now what they don't realize of course is i have turned on in mortal uh so now let's just pause that there just purely out of interest what is going on at the moment what we can say is we definitely don't have a visual line of sight to that tire <laughs> look what's done to the ground pretty cool right we definitely don't have a visual line of sight to that target oh i can just feel wags waving his finger at me now doing this video but it does kind of need doing doesn't it don't it and i am expecting dcs to shine through there is a line of sight there is a line of sight look Oh, it's debatable, isn't it? It's debatable. I can see my chopper there. Can you? I don't know if you can see it on the MPEG. That is my chopper right there. There's the bottom of it. There's the rotor blade. So it can see me. Um, I have no bones about that. Let's go and have a look at the other dude. Let's have a look at the Shilka. What can the Shilka see? The other Shilka can see me as well. Well, so far that's actually bloody impressive. Uh, the two units that are firing at me, although they are radar guided and they probably are using their radar, radar guidance, I think may be wrong. But both of them can see me through those leaves. So, so far, everything is good. I know in reality they'd probably never, you know, be able to see me through that little bit. But, you know, so far everything is logical, everything is good, so... Uh, it started off bad, but it's actually got really good. Uh, anyway, this isn't actually part of the test, really, so let's just carry on. That was a bit of a surprise to me. So let me jump in my Huey now. Uh, I've got to try not to run them out of ammo, ideally. So the first thing that we're going to test is terrain. Can we hide behind terrain, by which I mean, you know, mounds of earth, mountains, things like that. Um, and we all know the answer. Yes, obviously it works. We've all flown DCS enough to know it works, but I have to prove that now. Um, I have to prove its level of accuracy. So let me get on with that, see if I can fly this baby today. I just want to be careful not to run those boys out of ammo because kind of negates the test at that point. So what we should see soon is that they're going to stop firing at me because we're going to have a big mound of earth in the way. And now I don't know how the programming of their units works, whether it forgets about me completely whether when I go out of line of sight or whether it you know just keeps me in its memory banks so that I might reappear. Uh, doesn't really matter, we're not testing that today. Okay, so far so good. Stop it, please. Okay, so we've proved very successfully that, yes, obviously terrain does block the line of sight. And there's not much to say about that. We all knew that was going to happen. So I guess what we could do, just to finish off this question, is ask... Let me just um, pop myself there. I need that. Uh, what proportion of my helicopter has to be displayed above that, that line, that edge there to be able to classify them as seeing me and firing me. That would be interesting. I'll see if I can test it. I might not be able to. The way uh, I used to make rudimentary shitty 3D games and I used to have to do line of sight testing as well for firing guns at stuff. And the way I did it is I drew a vector from the baddies over here, 3D vector, to our target here. And I would just use the center. But I uh, know, in fact, what I did was I drew a boundary box around this guy here, shrunk boundary box, and... I would say, does if that vector there can meet any of the faces of that boundary box and not be intercepted by anything else in terms of faces, then it had line of sight. And that just about worked okay. So what I'm saying is it's when I did it, I had a super simplified you know, boundary box. Is it going to be boundary box space? Is it going to be percentage of model cleared over that face? I have absolutely no idea, but I think it'll be interesting. We'll see when the first guy starts firing at us, I guess. So um, this might be a touch... Awkward, I'm not going to lie, but we'll give it a go. Stop! First thing fired. Here was the challenge, look. Pew. And... Uh, there I am. So the challenger more or less waited until the majority of, of our chopper hit me right in the face, look, uh, was clear of the thing. Um, 
Then again, there is a whopping great wall in the way. So uh, there's a wall in the way. Okay, that kind of negates that test really. So in terms of what percentage of the model has to be above the um, thingy, I don't think we're going to be able to test it there. That I don't know where his line of sight vector is drawn from. So I don't think we can do that. Never mind. Um, took a while longer than I thought, but uh, we've tested that the terrain gets in the way and is modelled. Next is the infrastructure what i'd call the large static objects if i was programmed dcs which i obviously haven't but if i had uh, that's what i would call a bridge so let's go look at a bridge now stand by this may be a little bit difficult to test actually because the bridge doesn't stick up very far see that bit there that bit i'm pretty sure is part of the static object and not the terrain it's kind of just bolted onto the terrain there so if i park my chopper kind of in there that might be a test mightn't it let's go and have a closer look at that if not then those telegraph poles or whatever they're called you know the power lines might be an interesting thing to test oh vrs sees in r i have got a mortal on but if i ram that my rotors into that thing it will still be a bit of a nightmare that's some pretty cool flying right Oh, I hit something, I hit something, I hit something. Ah! Maybe not. Yeah, that's kind of a test. Look, we can test that feature there, look. Kind of get up there. This is so hard. There, that there. Ping. I think that's where the train ends there, and that's where the static object starts there. Ugh, I mean, as ever, I may be wrong, but now where the hell are the bad guys? Are they over there somewhere? I mean, they are basically right in front of me through this mound. Aha! Stop! We have Action. Oh, it's the Challenger again. That Challenger really likes me. No, the ZU's, uh, the Zeus is aimed down as well. So let's see what they can see. Oh, it's bloody smoke in the way, look. So that challenger thinks he can see me. That's kind of annoying because that's right behind that thing. I can see that dust cloud and he can see that dust cloud. So that means I think he can actually see me. All right, let's keep it together, man. Keep it together. Obviously they can see me now. Can they see me when I go behind this bit? No, they stopped firing. They stopped firing, look. When I'm behind what I think is a static object here, there's what I believe to be a static infrastructure object, I think. That is some pretty cool flying, right? How close are those blades? And then if we jump to doodah -da doodah, -da, and we go... <laughs> look, I mean, you could just see my little thing, but I think, you know, I think we can forgive them that. So behind that object there, that is me hidden and they're not firing at me. So I can't find any other better way of testing what I call a large object. So that's that done. Uh, next, why don't we try, um, just purely out of interest, um, this telegraph high tension power line here. And the reason I say that is because remember, if I was programming this, and I'm not a very good programmer obviously, I would just create a bounding box around that and treat it as a solid object, you know. How clever is DCS? Is it gonna is it gonna model that lattice work with line of sight? I mean, it's highly unlikely. It's just wasted. You know, again, when you're making a video game, you've got to think of efficiency. It's just pure wasted efficiency to do that kind of stuff. Uh, or they're going to put a bounding object around it, or some kind of transparency percentage, or something like that. I don't know. So we're going to try that next, and we always have to be remind mindful that those hostiles may run out of ammo. So just be a little bit careful. <laughs> this video is probably going to take a long time, by the way, because it's you know we just need to be. Thorough. It's pointless. It's pointless just going behind a tree and saying, "Yeah, it works." You, you know, you gotta uh, do things properly at the end of the day. Um, never do anything unless you can do it properly. I always say, but just you know, just don't waste your time. Otherwise, great opportunity to fly the Huey, my favourite helicopter, the Huey. Um, and a lot of you would agree with me. A lot of you wouldn't, I suppose. But it's the best flying chopper. Second to the Mi8, second to the K50, and fourth to the Gazelle. Um, and I can't quantify that, I can only tell you that based on my experience, which is a lot. So, I can guarantee you it is the best flying helicopter. K50 
pay, concentrate. Uh, it's an ED product, and ED products are always very good. Right, I've lost my wits here. Where is the hostiles? There they are, I see them. Look at that! Look, he picked me out through those trees. Did you see that? That was a Strella that just picked me out through this tree. Actually, I think they can all see me. Uh, I think we're about to get raped here. In the face! I missed! Ha <laughs> ha! You lose! The tiniest of jinking can fall an IR missile in the helicopter. Or no jinking at all. Right. I mean... I'm behind this object now, you know? The, my body, my main body is behind this object and nothing is firing at me. So that, what I call a relatively large static object, is blocking their line of sight. Again, it, you know, th there's no way they've modelled all of this kind of trust work in terms of, in terms of line of sight. They probably, probably put a bounding box around it, or maybe two or three bounding boxes around it, and that's just, you know, an opaque object, which is exactly how it should be done. Anything else is, you know, just uh, wasting everyone's time. There I am, and you can see, look. My body, in fact, even my rotors are pretty much behind that box there. Um, so, as expected, really. Pretty good, pretty happy with that. You see the wall reset. What happens is, once I've gone out of sight, it looks like they just forget about me. Um, so rather than saying, he must have gone behind a pearl and he's going to come out again, they just go bzzz, back to green status or whatever it is, and, uh, and, and back, more or less. So what have we learned so far? Terrain works perfectly well you know as far as we can test big objects seem to work well um as much as we'd want them you know at the end of the day i can now hide behind a pylon i know i can do that um next is to go to smaller static objects so what we're going to do is get behind a couple of houses over here maybe and some trees trees are going to be a bit dubious i can feel feel this but we'll just talk about them when, when they get there uh, i think trees is what upsets most people about dcs and that's why where the complaints have come from so i think we need to clear up a couple of myths there um i'm going to reset the server so they will get their ammo back and we'll uh, jump in again standby in fact someone said left shift and r reset oh fuck me it does i thought they were taking the piss okay oh lots of lovely objects to test so this is a very complex complex model they've got here it's very difficult for test uh for line of sight so it's going to be interesting let's um let's go and have a look at that dome look at that dome up there and think how many polygons are in there how many faces how many edges are there I mean, there's no way that that there is modeled for line of sight per se it's got to be a bounding box uh but it is the whole you know shop building one big boundary box are they separate boundary boxes it's going to be interesting to find out isn't it let's go and have a look oh i'm all over the place okay i mean yeah i should have got a camera to do this really i'm a pretty shocking qe pilot i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie right there they are they'll start firing at me at the moment there's no doubt about it but what happens if i get behind this thing Brrr. You know what? That's going to make it really hard, guys. Lord, give me strength. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Building's blown up. Thank you for that, you flip heads. It's my fault. Bad, bad driving. Bad super gap driving. King, get me now, boys. Get me now. It's working. It's working. Look at that. They're definitely not firing at me. They have kind of blown the house up, but that there is actually a really interesting test. They've kind of blown everything up, but but I've kind of you know most of me is hidden behind this thing. Again, we don't think all of these, all this lattice work and all these faces are modelled for um, line of sight because I think that would be a bit of a waste of time. But there's probably, by the looks of things, a kind of little boundary box there around it. And that is shielding a percentage of my probably boundary box or boundary boxes. And um, from their view, where are they? There I am. So from this guy and probably the rest of them, what they're seeing now is ba, 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 that there 
you know, the percentage of my helicopter is hidden, therefore it won't, fi it won't fire me. I mean, that's a really good test. So far, we've only seen, you know, exceptional things so far. It's doing better than I thought it would. Um, okay, next test. Poles. If this was me programming it, I probably would not model those poles. So let's see if they've bothered to do the poles and how that's going to work. So stand by. This may lead to problematic. Okay, why don't we just drop ourselves down here a little second. <laughs> that was a 105, 120 mil that just popped up. So what we can see here, again, this bounded box of this or this object here is shielded us completely. It only hides kind of, um, oh, he's seen me. He knows I'm there, look. So at this point, he can see a percentage of me to keep his interest in me, look. Oh, no, he's not. So he, he's, he doesn't see enough percentage of me to keep his interest in me. Now, whether that's, I still haven't decided, whoops. I still haven't decided whether he's working on me as a percentage or whether he just uh, looks at a center point of me. He may be looking at a center point of me. That was another way of doing it. Um, so I don't know. And it doesn't really matter to be honest. But that there. Right, next, the pole. And I'm not talking about the Polish. I'm reading a book about the Polish in World War II at the moment. Very interesting. And how the Polish were negated, not allowed to turn up to the 1996 uh, celebrations of World War II because of the fear of upsetting Stalin. How interesting a piece of knowledge is that? Oh, it might work. It does work, look, it works. Or does it? No, I don't think the Poles model per se, by the looks of things. No. I mean, ugh, they can probably see me perfectly well even through the pole, to be honest. They can look, that's why they've... Fine, I'll try moving slightly right. I don't, I don't think it doesn't make any difference to be honest. It's just too skinny, isn't it? Ah, uh, supercat. No, supercat. Try that. They're too spaced out. Someone's always going to be able to see me. Uh, I think we'll scrap that because that's just annoying. How about this little... Whoa, that's a small static object. Jesus, poor helicopter. Oh, do it, cat. So now we're behind this wall. No one's firing at me, look. Let's go and see what they can see. Oh, oh they can't see anything, basically, can they? Uh, because it's all just mush at the moment. Where am I? Oh, hoo, 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 you little rat bag. The Guska can see us, apparently. I'm not sure we're going to get a, ever get a clean shot to be able to see what he can see. And so can Shilka. Oh, they've blown the fence away. <laughs> uh, yeah. mm, okay, well, that's, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, right. Um, is there anything? There's a static helicopter. I'd really like to get behind that helicopter. I don't think I'm going to get the chance. All right, boys, give it a rest. Jesus Christ! They're probably just going to kill that helicopter before I can get behind it. But you never know. Naff off, would you? Super Cup. That is not hidden. That is not hidden. How's that? Let's pack it in. He's going to blow that bloody helicopter up now, isn't he? So, um, now the reason this might not work, work, work is it may be a dynamic object. It might not actually be a static object, which is what we're going to talk about in a bit. I mean, we're definitely hidden. Well, sort of hidden. It's working. It's only bloody working. Ooh. Now that's a game changer because that... Well, mm, It's kind of, It is a static object. It is a static object, isn't it? And that's why it's working. Okay. And you can see... We go to Mr. Tunguska now. There, look. Look. There's just hardly any me of me visible. And again... That's probably not really... I know we look at that and we look at kind of all these curved edges and stuff. That's not generally how it works in video games. Generally, like I said, there's a there's a, a bounding box or some square bounding boxes for this kind of calculation, this helicopter. So it's probably a kind of a box like that, you know. And I'm behind that box by a percentage and therefore it's uh, 
Got me. So, well, um, uh, summary so far. Terrain, yeah, you know, fine, perfect. Static objects, perfect, pretty much, you know. Uh, exceeding what I thought a DCS could do. Even hiding, even hide, being able to hide behind things like this. Uh, I'm not going to go by those buses, and they're static objects. I'm sure I have no problems believing that would work as well. So we're at the point in DCS now where we can hide behind small static objects. Uh, a percentage of us is covered, and we're considered concealed. I think that's... Um, and we would all agree that's just extremely good programming, to be honest. Uh, now things get a bit more tasty. We've got trees, and we've got um, dynamic objects, movable objects. Now, trees uh, seem to be the thing that upset most people, because they get their helicopter behind a tree, and they think, no, 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 you can't shoot me, and then the uh, Tunguska shoots them. Well, you know, rather than me just jibber-jabbering, why don't we just uh, try it out, standby? Okay, so we're just the other side of some trees now, and I'm going to go behind those trees and see that they probably can shoot me um, to a degree. Um, my guess of how it's working is that trees do have, uh, whoops, uh, trees do have boundary boxes, you know, for testing. I mean, these are these are what these are is these are um, uh, these, these are little bit maps in all different directions, little, little, little faces, polygons, with uh, transparent uh, bitmaps on them, or, you know, JPEGs or whatever, that's what they are, they're, they're a bunch of faces, and those faces, individual faces, won't be, each face is about, you know, three feet squared, something like that. Each face, there's no way they've modelled that for line of sight, so instead, what they'll probably have is a bounding box, probably, if it was me, so if that's a tree, I would make that, that boundary box for a line of sight testing, something like that, you know? So probably not the trunk or the stalk, whatever it's called, but that there, okay? And again, if this was me programming DCS, and it's a good thing it's not, um, I would say I would call this a semi-translucent boundary box. So that house there, that part of the house there, is a fully trans-opaque boundary box. You can't see me behind it. I would call this a kind of a 50% translucent boundary box. So there's kind of like a 50% chance uh, that this guy will be able to see through it and not see through it. Something like that. So don't think... And that's how I would program it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they'd done something similar. So don't necessarily treat trees as 100% opaque. I think that's what we're about to find. I may be completely wrong, but um, we'll go and try it out now. That's just my, you know, basic logic of how they would do this. So let's go and have a look. Oh! <laughs> Mavis, why would you build there? Sorry. Try that one again, I think. So I need to get eyes on some of those guys, really. Oh well, so far, I can't see them, they can't see me. What we need really is one layer of trees. Now, if my theory is correct and there's kind of like a percentage translucency on these boundary boxes, that would mean that the more trees in the way, the higher that percentage, the higher that cumulative percentage would go up. That's how I would work it. So you get three, four trees in the way. It's not only 50%, it's 95% translucency. Do you see what I'm getting at here? And what we're imagining is that the way it will test it is it will draw a 3D vector, which is just uh, two you know, points from him to my center point here, and it'll measure all of the trees in the way, and give it a cumulative, you know, opacity. Yeah, there they are, right. Th these trees here, look, there's just a couple of them. Oh, in the face. Owie. So you know what, the smoke was a bad idea, Cap. Smoke was a bad idea. Now look how they can shoot me through this tree, or can they? They can't. The answer is they can't. So whatever logic's going on there, that is a solid object. Okay, well, kind of. You know, I'm sitting here behind that tree. None of them are shooting me. That's pretty good. So we can argue that, yeah, that's pretty solid. And let's see what they can see. Yeah, I'm invisible. I don't even, I can't even know where I am. Which one am I at? 
there, you can see my smoke. So I'm there, look. Can you see me at all? Can't see me at all, I don't think. So what do I need to do to get shot now? That's the thing that we need to test, isn't it? So how far do I need to eke out to the side and... It's hard because I'm always moving, so the logic going on in the background constantly wavering about because I'm moving about. It takes several seconds for them to get a lock on me, remember, to be able to fire. I don't think I can hold myself still enough, annoyingly. Out of interest, let's go down. No, that won't work because there's a wall in the way. That's annoying. So the fact is, if I eke out to the edge a little bit there, they do start firing me. Look, real quickly, real quickly. If I get back into the centre, easier said than done, then they can no longer see me. They can no longer see me, look. Now, if I want to go along here a little bit, I can draw a line to me without intersection of those trees. Let's see if we can see them through that little gap there and whether they can see me through that little gap there. If they can, then that will change everything. I just don't think I've got the ability to hold the chopper still, unfortunately. There we go, look. It's just... No, I think... So the way this is working in my mind is that we've got one box here. Kind of, you know, it may not go to the edge of the trees, but it'll probably go something like that. Kind of like that, down like that and that's hiding me and then I've got another box that's kind of like there and that's hiding me and so if I go slightly above this box here or left of this box here or right of this box here then um, they're gonna get me so let's move just slightly out you got a little maybe a little line of sight there between those boxes between those trees ahead can you see that yeah and it's found me it's found me so this box more or less ends something like that I'd imagine uh, this one here would kind of end, you know, if this is indeed how they work, something like that look there. And this one is just a tiny little one that probably wouldn't even be able to cover enough of a percentage of my body. And that leaves a, a little gully between there and that guy there has found that gully between those two boundary boxes. Um, what more do you want me to test really? It's, it works perfectly. Better than I thought actually. Let's go see if that's, we can get behind that small one. Look, that would be a nice little test. Now, I've just realised that I didn't realise these two were here, so that may have, may, have, may have had extra opacity. So what I'm going to do is actually go behind those two now. See if that can hide me. Right, so what can these two shield me from? Yeah, so these... Oh, let's just see. These two are shielding me perfectly, right? Just have a little look at that, that's cool. You see, I'm just sticking my nose in that box there, you can see. Yeah. So the only question is then, what can I hide behind that little one? That's just the extra piece of information I want for myself. Maybe a bit difficult to keep behind this one, but we'll see. Ah, come on, Cap, get your shit together. It's so hard to concentrate with that shit going on. So what we could say, nah, definitely they are shooting through that tree there. Um, that's good. That's good because I think it works on the opacity rule like I was talking about. One tree, one small tree, that probably does have a boundary box, that tree, but with just one layer and not two, you know, multiple layers of trees, that's not enough opacity to be able to, to hide myself. Um, I think that's more likely how it works than actually being able to see through those little leaves and stuff. I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, always corrected, always happy to be wrong, but um, I think it's probably how it's working. So we've got this guy here. Uh, I'm just not very well hidden in that as well. That doesn't help. Let's see if we can get a little bit better behind that tree, shall we? So where are they? They must be kind of over there. I think I've got my tail sticking out and I just didn't know it. Ah, why is this so hard? Okay. How does that feel? Aha! I think we're hidden finally. Oh god, I can't adjust. I haven't got the skill set. Yeah, they've stopped firing. They've stopped firing. Okay, so I'll take that back. Uh, this tree does have opacity, and I am hidden behind it. 
know what that's all about. But this guy stopped firing at me, and it looks like enough of my body is covered now, so that they can't see me. I still need to, I still need to waggle right. I've got my still got my ass fat ass sticking out. Yeah, no longer firing at me. Woot woot. Yeah, right. Let's just take the back so they don't appear to be translucent at all. I was just sticking out too far to the left. A tree appears to be a solid static model that is 100% opaque and you can hide yourself from it. Um, yeah, that's that. Um, now, one thing that annoys a lot of people, and I'm, I can test it, is that although those AR units are working perfectly at times of line of sight at the moment, you know, here's me hiding behind, you know, a stupidly small tree and they can't see me, um, which is fine. In fact, that looks so cool, doesn't it? Uh, but one thing that doesn't work very well is my AI gunners in my Huey um, don't seem to follow the same rules. What I could do now is turn on my AI gunners and shoot through trees. Well, I think that's what has been uh, complained about. And this may just be a you know, small bug with the Huey. That's uh, probably what it is. I will give that a go if I can now. Stop. You can see my guy shooting now, and he's shooting right through that boundary box, bounding box. So, it, yeah, absolutely right. I, mean, I don't really need to do a better test than that. Uh, people were complaining that the AI on helicopters don't follow the line of sight rules, and you can see he's shooting straight through a tree there, and possibly through a wall, kind of debatably through a wall, and just kills everything. And we found that on the Tunguska video, killing the Tunguska. Uh, we had to keep our gunners hold fire until we'd passed the trees. And one slightly thing you might say is that we might be inside that bounding box. So what I'll do is quickly move myself out to another tree and show you what I'll do exactly the same if he hasn't killed them all by then. Free! Oh, so now he's given up. Now he's given up firing. Well, he does have a line of sight. No, he's shooting right through that tree, look. Nah, it's debatable, isn't it? Just can't get far, far. Yeah, yeah, you can see it there. You can see it. it's just shooting right through the tree. For shooting right through the trees, look. Blah, 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 blah. So, for some reason, just a little bit, uh, you know, funny at the moment when it comes to AI shooting from human-controlled aircraft. He just shoots straight through stuff, basically. You see, he shoots through all those trees, and those hostiles can't shoot back at me. So I'll push that over back over to ED, and they can sort that out. That's a thing. Um, right, so that's that tested. Next, we need to go to dynamic objects. And dynamic objects are a different ball game. I am suspecting that dynamic objects do not hinder your line of sight, like ships, like tanks. Uh, and the reason for that is, my understanding is, that because they can move. So a static object, okay, like trees, houses, bridges, walls, that funny dome thing, will never have to move, okay? So what you can do is when you build this map, um, this is not just a map full of um, uh, uh, polygons and textures. It's um, maps on video games tend to be uh, quite intelligent. And a lot of the processing for line of sight, for heat detection, for whatever, lighting and stuff, is actually done, um, processed ahead of time at ED's headquarters or whatever, before you ever actually get your aeroplane in here to save a lot of processing time. It's called clever programming. I remember it started off with uh, Quake and stuff like that, and, and they had pre-processed pre maps. And, I, you know, a long time since I did this, so I can't really remember, but... You know, we've got this area here. You know, when, when we draw that vector, um, the, the line of sight vector from this guy to that guy to do our, our line of sight test, well, we you know, don't want to have to test every single object on the Caucasus because there are 35 trillion objects, right? So you look at your pre-processed, -pro, pre you know, hit detection maps that have been, that are encoded into this map here, and you say, well, these object, this object's roughly, you know, to Diddy or LVR, this object's roughly here. Uh, so if we look at our pre progress maps, that means we only need to test this bunch of trees and this bunch of trees and this wall and this guy over here for our heat detection. So that reduces our runtime processing 
by you know you know you wouldn't be able to do it unless you had those kind of maps basically and again uh, maybe things have don't aren't done like that anymore but that was my how i used to program stuff in the 90s when i had a working brain and so i'm sure it's no different now uh, it's just simple logic at the end of the day isn't it anyway what i'm getting at is you can do that if the objects don't move like trees like skyscrapers and stuff because they never move you can pre-process them what you can't pre-process is something that might move because the pre-processing doesn't work and so this stuff here can move uh, and, that's, and that means you have to there, there 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 are shortcuts and there are ways of doing bits of pre-processing you can split the map into sectors and stuff like that but generally it's a real pain in the butt at this point to start doing line of sight testing on these movable objects now stuff like um in armor 3 it is done still because it's essential it's an infantry simulator you have to have that done in dcs you don't really have to you're not going to be flying your plane behind a ship or a challenger tank um it, you know it only really starts to unwind a little bit when we've got helicopters and, and stuff like that and, and combined arms vehicles which aren't you know not not the mainstay of dcs so we're going to test this now and that's prop that's what my predictions are and we'll see what actually happens. So my new way of restarting, left control and left shift and arc. Piao. So let's bop out to that Tigondagaroga, the Tigondagarogas, shall we? And frankly, I'll be amazed if there's any kind of hit detection here. All right, so first I need to get shot at. So that they can actually see me. Come on, stop trying to hit me and hit me. Right, there we go. And now I'm going to duck behind. So, um, and let me just specify one thing. Line of sight is not the same as hit detection. Hit detection is a completely different process. So what I'm suspecting is they can see me through the boat, but they can't hit me through the boat. You know, those missiles are going to hit that boat. Obviously, that is model. Um, and that's a completely different process from line of sight modeling. Line of sight is a vector, and those, their bullets and stuff are much more complicated than a simple vector. God knows how much processing. Yeah, yeah, you can see they they see me, and they're just uh, hitting the boat. Yeah, exactly as we thought. Um, yeah, and I completely support that. I understand why they've done that. That saves a hell of a lot of processing time, and you know, for the fact that someone might one day hide behind a boat, it's just I don't think worth programming. So I do support that. Uh, next, I don't know why I'm going to bother because I know it won't work. But I'm going to hide behind um, a Challenger tank. And one other thing as well about this is that a lot of people say you put your SAMs too close together, they won't work because they can't see through each other. Well, the reason I do that is because I know from experience that units can see through each other like this. So you can put SAMs close to each other. And I know you wouldn't do it realistically, have SAMs close to each other. But, you know, for testing purposes and stuff, I sometimes do. Right, let's go and hide behind a Challenger tank. I hope they're tall enough. Right, so get them aiming at me. Hello. Okay, they're shooting at me. And let's dip down. I'm hoping we're not in defilade here. That's my main concern. No, you can see that. They're still firing at me, look. I'm completely hidden by these tanks. But again, dynamic objects. Um, they're just not tested for line of sight. Uh, that's it. Uh, now, the inter just out of interest, something like that over there is a static object. So that probably would have line of sight. I probably could hide behind that out of interest. That's it. There's nothing else I really want to test. You're getting, in kind of, you're getting really picky if you go any further than that. What we found from this is uh, really reassuring. And it it's actually goes a lot further than what I thought it would do. I'm shown obviously when hide behind terrain, we knew that anyway. You can hide behind static objects, including little bits that are sticking out, you know, little uh, pylons and, um, and um, you know, that little dome and stuff like that. So stuff like that, you can really hide behind to fire your hot missiles and stuff like that. Trees um, are fine, but there is obviously that thing at the moment where if, you know, your AI pilots just ignore trees and just shoot through them. It's just something they'll have to fix, obviously. It's, you know, it shouldn't be like that. But otherwise, trees work perfectly. You know, we've, we've displayed that. There's, there's nothing more I can do there. Houses, odd-shaped houses and stuff like that. Still never cleared up, really, whether they're boundary box or whether they're more highly modeled. Does it matter? Not really. Uh, you know, it's, this is not an infantry simulator. I don't really care about the shape of a roof hiding me, particularly. 
but they work um, to, to a decent high uh, uh, quality. I can hide behind, um, it was a real surprise to see I could hide behind static objects like helicopters. It shows the benefit of putting things down as static objects rather than um, dynamic objects and just leaving them without fuel or something. You know, they provide a, 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 a you know, actual objects to hide behind for helicopters, things like that. Dynamic objects do not hide you. They do protect you, obviously, as a buffer because hit detection. But um, they do not hide you from line of sight for the exact reasons that I thought it would be because that's just how you program a, uh, a decent game. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it, y'all. Uh, oh, um, curvature of the Earth is modelled and you cannot shoot through the curvature of the Earth. I've tried that. Uh, sorry, see through the curvature of the Earth. Well, I... Mm, Mm, I think that's right. I was doing ships, and I think I'm right in saying that. Maybe another test for one day, but I couldn't get ships to shoot kind of through the curvature of the Earth before. Uh, maybe that will need a bit more testing. We'll see. So that's be done and out. I think that's pucker, and I'm glad I did that. And that should put, hopefully, a lot of things to rest. Um, uh, I don't think we should get any more complaints about that. I think that's pretty, pretty good. Right. In fact, sorry, there's just one more thing I want to mention, and that is that a lot of the complaints I've had about line of sight have been on multiplayer servers, especially with fast-moving objects, and you've just got to be a little bit careful because, remember, on a multiplayer server, you have uh, latency, ping, lag, okay? So it takes time, a certain amount of milliseconds. If I'm on a, a server that's in the USA, it takes 200, 250 milliseconds. It's, that's a fifth or a quarter of a second for me to communicate uh, accurately with the server machine so that means although it may look everything may look very synced and together from my view on my screen um, with all of the other players human players and stuff like that it that's not actually what's happening on the server that is just clever predicted programming from uh, from ED's Point of view what's actually happening is that there is lag that where i am on the map in my f15 at mac one is several hundred feet on, on my computer my personal computer to where i actually am on the server because if it takes 200 milliseconds for us to communicate then at mac one that f15 has traveled i don't know 900 feet or something and so quite often on your screen you can be hidden from line of sight you know this is very quick things when Estrella shooting at you and AAA shooting at you. Uh, you can be hiding behind a bridge, but on the actual server, because you've got a lag, a latency of 200 milliseconds or so, you're actually past that bridge. You're 900 feet past that bridge. And again, you don't see that kind of lag and that choppiness because of the clever um, cleaning up that they've done, the, the clever netcode. But in reality, you know, you can't beat physics. And that physics says that that latency says you're actually somewhere else on the server. Um, on your screen, what I'm saying is you could have been hiding behind the top of a hill, but on the server, you were just popping out of the top of that hill. And therefore, the missile could see you you know do you know what I'm getting at you've all seen it if you've been on multiplayer DCS and that's not a DCS thing as well it's exactly the same on armor uh, you get that but because you have fast moving objects on DCS that is can be really expanded a bit because like I said a fast jet can cover a lot of time in 200 300 150 150 milliseconds and it's just something to bear in mind and just be a little bit careful of before you're oh that's stupid dcs is rubbish i'm better than everyone that should never have happened you know you think think okay well hang on my airplane was traveling that fast i have it's got 75 milliseconds lag here who's right is it you know is, is the machine right or are, are i right it's just something to i have to just keep telling people again and again and again they never seem to learn um you know logic over emotion uh, right, I'm definitely going to leave it there because I'm boring the pants off everyone. Um, if you're still with me, then you're mad because that was probably really boring. But thanks for watching and I'll see you later.